Hi everyone, this is uh, Weiss with uh, my other video here, part 2 uh, of the FAA PAR written test. Um, uh, we, uh, we discussed performance, so we're going to go ahead and finish the uh, rest of the performance calculations. Um, <clears throat> Uh, uh, it's gonna mess up, messes, uh, the questions because we came back again and I uh, had to close the app. So the questions that we didn't go through, we're gonna go through. Rest of them will be skipped. So, um, so let's go through this question. What is the headwind component of a landing on runway 18 if the tower reports the winds at 220 at 30 knots? <clears throat> so they just want to <clears throat> find, excuse me, find the headwind component on runway 18. Uh, let's say, let's put it this way before we look at the figure. Let's say that this is runway 18 here. <clears throat> okay. And we know that the tower reported winds are 220 at 30 knots. Say 18. 19, 20, 21, 22, so 220 uh, at velocity of 30 knots. Okay, always have this image of uh, which way the winds are coming, so what runway are you taking off? Okay, so runway 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, so the difference is 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees. 10, 20, 30, 40 degrees. So we know it's 40 degrees from the right coming. Uh, now we can look at the um, chart here. Um, <clears throat> see this, uh, this zero here, this line that goes all the way up, uh, headwind component here. Let's say that this is a runway. This is this runway here, 18. Okay. And we know that the winds are 40 degrees offset. We have 40 degree crosswind. So we'll just go maybe this one right here, 40 degrees. So it's coming down like that. Same thing. But it's at 30 knots. Um, what is asking you, what is the headwind component for the landing on runway 18? So we know that the if we come back here, if the velocity is 30 knots, see this velocity all the way 30 knots. So if we come down from 40 all the way stop at 30 knots, just shoot down straight to the headwind component. It will come up with the number of Let's say 22 to 24, around 23 to 24 knots. That is your headwind component, they asking. If you wanted to know uh, what, is the, uh, what is the crosswind component, we would come from right exactly here, come all the way down, it will be around 19 knots. So we know that headwind component would be 23 to 24 something like that so we have 23 so we just take the 23 which is correct <clears throat> all right perfect let's move on uh let's see ground effect is most likely to result in which problem we already said this we already did this become airborne before reaching recommended uh, takeoff speed uh, I'm going to go to the next one, determine the pressure altitude with indicated altitude is, we already did that. Uh, your indicated altitude is this, pressure altitude, um, uh, determine the pressure altitude with indicated altitude. So you just find the um, 2992, oops, 92 minus 28, equals whatever you get, the result, um, and then you add that, 2 minus 2, 8, 2, 2, 
will be positive um, 1.7. So that's positive 1.70. So um, that is the um, positive so it's 1,700 feet um, added to 1380, 1700 feet over 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, this one is too little that I chose. So this one is too little. That's the close one. Basically, you're going to get the close one. It's not going to give you exact. Um, oops. Uh, it's not going to give you exact. So 2991 is the most the closest to the. Um, <clears throat> that. Um, let's see. Let's run a little bit. Let's see. What do we get about that? 1,300. Assuming the pressure altitude. Oh, so you're starting in the pressure altitude. We got the pressure altitude of um, 1380. That's indicated altitude. You're going to subtract minus uh, see, plus pressure altitude. Let's give this to a 22. Two eight two two right up here. Two eight two two between this and we um <clears throat> we can get the pressure altitude conversion factor here, which is um about a hundred and three, so it'd be fifty one fifty one, let's say fifty one. Um the difference between this is 103, so it'll be <clears throat> 1586, 1586, 1586, and then plus 1380, uh, that'll be definitely 6, uh, 6, it'll be 9, and it'll be 2, 2966. Um, if you go by this chart here, and if you add 29.66, it's going to be the closest to uh, 29.91. That's your answer there. <coughs> um, they give you a table, so you can interpolate it. Um, but since <coughs> um, what we've been doing is always like this. Um, then you come up to this question, this answer here. So there's two ways you get this chart, uh, or you do it by yourself, which is most correct answer is going to be this one. Okay. So if you want to go by chart, you can choose the chart. We already done that. So, all right. Determine the approximate ground roll distance. We've done that. Remember. Uh, that's floating caused by the phenomenon of the ground effect will be most realized during approach to land when at the higher the normal angle of attack, less than normal by star, less than the length of a wingspan above. We did that, did this, and this is done. What effect does high density altitude have on aircraft performance? Reduced climb performance, obviously. Uh, determine total distance required for takeoff crew. We've done that. Um, ground effect is done. We have done this one. Effect we went through air speech. This is, uh, we got that one down. And this one, it's 
So this one is same thing the way we um, uh, the we we talked about it. You know, remember we draw the if you haven't watched my video part part one, you have to watch that. We draw the runways and we discussed it. Let's say let's let's do this one for you guys with a reported wind up north at 20 knots. So from from north, the winds are coming 20 knots, right? Uh, which runway? 6, 29, or 32? So runway 6 would be uh, like this. 6, 29 would be... Uh, 29. Um, no, not like that. Oops. Uh, let's say that's 6. 29 would be like that, for example. Runway 29, and then runway 32 will be more like this. 32. Alright, so. Um, and it says um, <clears throat> which runway is acceptable for use for an airport with 13 knots maximum crossing component? We we'll bring up this uh, graph, but before we bring that up, we can easily choose which runway we can use. So, 60 to 360 degree to zero is 60 degrees, right? 60 degrees. Um, <clears throat> 290. Uh, uh, 290 would be um, the reciprocal is what? Um, <clears throat> 290. So. Um, let's say, two nine zero here, uh, three zero, three ten, three twenty, three thirty, three forty, three fifty, three sixty, oops, three sixty. So like ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy degrees offset, um, seventy degrees offset at this point. And then 320, 360 is 40 degrees. So I would definitely use the 320. And 320 will give you 40 degrees, which is come up here. 40 degrees. And then at 13 knots, 40 degrees come down all the way here. 13 knots. And that's going to give you exactly 13 knots of maximum course. If you use 60 degrees, let's say 60 degrees, coming down all the way, coming down. So at 60 degrees, um, uh, so 40 degrees at 20 knots will give you exactly 13 knots. 60 degrees at 20 knots is going to give you about 17. And then 70 degrees, uh, let's say, this is going to come all the way to 20 years, about 19 knots of cross. So the runway 32 will be perfect for you. So this question determine the total distance. You should know by now, it's very easy. Uh, come, what is the maximum wind velocity for a 30? crosswind if the maximum crosswind component for the airplane is 12 knots. Let's open up this thing here. What is the maximum wind velocity for 30 degrees? Um, so now we're thinking about this that, okay, so it says what is the maximum component wind velocity for 30 degree crosswind if the maximum crosswind component for the airplane is 12 knots. So we're going to um, come up. Um, so 12 knots, maximum crossing component uh, goes up to 30 degrees. Go 30 degrees uh, right up here. And uh, it says. Um, what is the maximum wind velocity? What maximum wind velocity 
would be about 22 to 24 knots. Um, I would say 24 knots was very close. So there it is. Um, next question, determine the pressure altitude at an airport is 35, 63 feet MSL with altimeter setting up. Obviously, you're going to go do this same thing. We've done that. Uh, <clears throat> so, what, what do you do is basically um, uh, determine the pressure altitude at the airport that is 35, 63 feet MSL with an altimeter setting of 2996. Come up here. 2996. Uh, 29.96 actually is right up here between these two. <coughs> Excuse me. So 2996 is between this to about minus 43. So we can take off 43. Uh, <coughs> <coughs> 43 about half of the 3563 will be about 35 uh, 23 or 21 something like that should be because you're taking off pressure um, so be 35 um, something like 35 27 yes that would be perfect so there you go here and go what is the next question? The previous question wasn't on the part one video. What effect, if any, does high humidity have on the aircraft performance? Well, it's going to decrease performance 100%. If anybody's saying different, you need to re-examine yourself. All right, so coming to determine the total distance required to land. This one is the same, same thing. Uh, we we done. Don't have to waste time on this one. So I'm in the pressure altitude. The airport is uh, feet MSL with an altimeter setting. Um, the same thing we just did it. So you know how to do that. Oops, get that. Uh, how far will the aircraft travel? Uh, we did this one. Uh, we brought up a um, E6B and calculate the. This one we've done that. It was. Uh, um, on the part one video, what is ground effect? We already um, chose this one on part one video, so forget about that. What is the corresponding component for landing on runway 18? If the tower reports the winds 220 at 30 knots, this one we can um, draw it right quick by the same wind component thing. So um, if this is runway 18, I think I did it, but Again, I'm going to do it. It says 40 degree offset. This is 220 coming from here at 30 knots. Winds are coming. So let's take a look at the graph here. It says <clears throat> the question states uh, what is the crosswind component for your landing on runway 18? So we're looking for, trying to look for a crosswind component in this case. This is runway 18. The, the offset goes is 40 degrees, coming up down from 40 degrees, you're uh, <clears throat> at 30 knots coming down. So coming all the way 30 knots, hit that border and then come down. So it's about 18, 19 knots. So that would be 19 knots. Perfect. Which coming of atmospheric condition will reduce aircraft takeoff and climb performance? So this one is kind of new uh, for this video. Uh, high temperature, low relative humidity. I would say high temperature, high relative humidity, and high density altitude. That's the worst of one. Uh, the worst case scenario you get. Um, uh, otherwise, I would postpone my flight or just you know take some baggages and, and people out of the plane. <clears throat> Uh, what is the effect of a temperature increase from 30 to 50 on the, on the density altitude if the pressure altitude remains 3,000? Obviously, the density altitude, um, we already talked about it, this graph, 
from this temperature, 50 degree Fahrenheit to 35 degree Fahrenheit to 50 degree Fahrenheit at the same pressure altitude, but the density altitude. Um, I don't want to guess it, but it was around, I think 900 feet. No, it was 1,000. This is this is obviously, I haven't calculated, so I just guessed it because it's on video number one. Don't judge me. <clears throat> Determine the maximum wind velocity for a 45 degree crosswind if the maximum crosswind component for the airplane is 25 knots. Okay. Um, so let's pull, pull up uh, the um, graph. It says determine the maximum uh, wind velocity for 45 degree crosswind. If the maximum crosswind component for airplane is 25 knots. So coming up here. It says 45 degree uh, right up here, and your maximum crossing component uh, of the airplane is 25 knots. 45 degree coming all the way to this line. Uh, coming up, coming up. Right up here. Just about 35 knots. Just about 35 knots. There we go. And that is your answer. Uh, that's how you get your answer. We already talked about uh, how much you're going to spend in 1,000 nautical mile. Um, in this case, basically, you are um, you are dividing 1,000. Uh, this was in video one, but still, I'm going to go ahead and give you the wise and divide 1,000 by if each knots, uh, 164, I think it was. 164 and then equals to um, <clears throat> thousand divided by 164 and then multiply by gallon per hour. So 11.5 uh, by 11.5 and you get 70. I multiply 11.5, it gives 70.12. That's on video uh, number one. Um, this one, we worked on it, video number one, no big deal. Um, uh, determine the, oops, I just, just mistaken. This was on uh, part one anyway, so determine the density altitude. God, this is crazy. Where was I? Uh, so basically, you are determining uh, what is the expected fuel consumption for 1,000 nautical miles from the following conditions. Um, this one is already passed. Uh, let's see which one is it. Determine the approximate line of ground roll. We already know this. It's very simple. Part one video. And then this one determine the density altitude for these conditions. It's very simple. Um, what you have to do is uh, basically, um, so what you have to do is um, get this out. All right, perfect. Here we go. So, uh, let's see if I can make it really. Uh, all right, there we go. What was it? Can I bring that out too? No, you can't, unfortunately. So, 2925 altimeter setting. You put the altimeter setting, you put the runway temperature, and then airport elevation, you get the. So, 2992, obviously, minus 2925 equals whatever you get. Um, Seven there, you get six there, sixty-seven, and that's plus. So you add to this six hundred seventy. So fifty-seven, fifty-eight, ten, something like that, or twenty. Um, fifty-eight, twenty, and on top of that, you gotta add that to the density altitude. 
but it's better to find it with the um, uh, with the uh, E6B. Um. <clears throat> All right, so this one, let's move this from here. The show me the maximum landing ground roll. We've been through this. Um, and what is the effect of uh, temperature increase from 30 to 50 Fahrenheit? Same thing I've, we've been through. Uh, determine the approximate ground roll distance required for takeoff. Uh, this is on video part one. All right, so these are the performance calculations of the private pilot written um, <clears throat> test. And if you don't watch part one, then you'll miss a lot of stuff on this. Um, so I worked on every single question here. Um, all right, hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you liked it, thumbs up. Please subscribe. Um, and... Um, Yep, enjoy my videos and keep posting videos.